tools for living effectively with hearing loss. Hearing loss, then the technology immediately gets brought into it. But there is also the skill for daily living. Many forms of hearing loss can be improved using strategies like getting someone's attention before speaking, turning off background noises, facing each other while talking, that improve communication more than any technology and cost nothing at all. Hearing loss is one of those things that we have to, at some point in time, accept and we have to incorporate it into our daily lives. Just basic communicative strategies can solve 95% of the problems. For instance, how to initiate a conversation, how to keep a conversation going. We have to have direct line of sight. And that's one of the first things that I learned. If you're out of sight, you're basically out of earshot. Because people with hearing loss look at a person, they look at uh, the movement of the lips, they look at the whole countenance, they look if what they hear and what they see kind of coordinates. It gives them a whole picture. Then there is also the fact that we have to have people speak, not in a loud voice. Screaming actually is totally counterproductive. My family and my friends have learned to talk to me uh, a little bit louder. Um, I find that I resent shouting. Yelling across the room doesn't work anymore. Or if I'm downstairs yelling up and having her toss me something from down the stairs, that doesn't work anymore. So I just make sure that I'm in the same room. If she doesn't hear me, I'll ask if she has her hearing aids in. And if she doesn't, then I'll move closer and make sure that I'm looking directly at her. Uh, it actually hurts my ears if somebody shouts at me because it is too loud. In some ways, it is not the level of sound as much as it is the clarity of the speaking. And so we have people usually, we tell them to speak in a normal voice, but to enunciate better. You know, and when we try to enunciate our words a little bit better, immediately that has a tendency to slow down the conversation a bit, which is a huge advantage for people who are trying to listen and to hear. I would recommend going and getting your hearing evaluated, looking into the different technologies, and there are lots of technologies. A lot of people, they don't want a formal fit hearing aid, they just want a simple device they can use with their phone. Like a simple over-the-counter device called a pocket talk, which looks a little bit like a Walkman with a pair of headphones, and in which the sound output can be far better than a $4,000 pair of hearing aids. There's also a whole host of products that don't rely on sound at all. Alarm clocks and fire alarms that vibrate your bed, as well as kitchen appliances and doorbells that blink and flash. There is technology, and I believe that when people go for hearing help, that they actually should be instructed on all of this. Once I got used to the hearing aids, and they're a challenge to get used to sometimes. Kathleen Marin. Life is so much better. Hearing aids are actually like prescription eyeglasses. They need to be programmed by an audiologist to match your specific hearing loss. Most people have hearing loss from age. It's slowly changed over time. Wearing a hearing aid is just that, it's an aid. It helps improve what hearing they have, helps them pick up on some of the things that they're missing. The fact is that hearing aids these days are small, invisible. Um, they work really well for people with mild to moderate hearing loss and they can make an enormous difference in how, how you go about your daily life. Hearing aids these days can easily cost up to $4,000 for a single hearing aid. And since most hearing loss is from noise or aging, that uh, tends to be bilateral in both ears. So that means you need two hearing aids at $4,000 a piece. Hearables, or personal sound amplification products, are often confused with hearing aids, but are actually over-the-counter solutions. Their quality really varies. After all, they are usually one size fits all, but they are much more affordable and many people find them helpful. There's clearly hearing loss comes on slowly over time, so you don't necessarily need everything all at once. If I notice I was beginning to struggle a little bit, usually in, let's say group conversations and busy outings, is that increasingly there are a whole array, some better than others, of what I'll call consumer electronics or what people call personal sound amplifying products, PSAPs. Basically commercial consumer grade technology which don't advertise to treat hearing loss, because you do that, it becomes FDA regulated, and then you can't even sell it over the counter anymore. Dr. Frank Arlin. But these consumer grade devices, which allow you to hear in certain challenging situations. And I'll give you an example. There are a few companies now which make a device now, uh, which look like little earbuds. They go into your ear, they have a little neon glow to them. They have a built-in MP3 player. They work as a Bluetooth um, headset for your phone. And oh yeah, by the way, they can also amplify sound, right? 
So is that a hearing aid or is that a lifestyle device? And you realize there's a lot of convergence between the two nowadays. People are beginning to realize that accommodations for people with hearing loss are very as important as accommodations for people uh, in wheelchairs. Under the Americans with Disabilities Act, public venues like theaters and lecture halls are required to provide assistive listening devices, and if they have a hearing loop, it can transmit sound wirelessly to the T-coil in your hardware without the need to request additional equipment. So I walk into a meeting. Christine Morgan. There's looping. Well, I had never turned on my T-coil in six years because no place was looped. Especially the big movie chains to have um, either captioning devices in their theaters or induction loops in their theaters so that people with hearing loss can go hear a movie and um, don't have to limit themselves to foreign movies with captions. Mm -hmm. Hearing loss is is a, ma you know, a major category in uh, the kinds of um, access that the ADA requires. It's not up till this point always been uh, followed, but I think more and more it is. This spectrum of care, right? So it's not all or none, right? It's that you add in technology depending on where your level of hearing loss is and in terms of how complex it is and in terms of how much care you need. Learn more, hearinglossmatters.org, 800-311-1148.